the time, and now is the place for the end of the term English examination. Here it is. 75 pages of ambiguous essays, maniacal multiple choice, and the most truculent, troublesome, and tricky true-false questions that have ever existed. You will have 30, no, make that 20 minutes to answer each and every question, and if you don't, well, <laughs> you know what that means. It means you will never ever be a success. You will never go to college. You will never have a job. You will be unpopular, disliked, and unattractive. And worst of all, you will be cast into the eternal pit of oblivion. Begin. And I thought my 11th grade biology teacher was rough. Okay, so that might seem a little extreme, but the stress, nervousness, and anxiety that demanding tests and demanding teachers can produce is no joke. And even though there's really no getting around taking tests, there are ways to get control of that anxiety that taking tests can produce. So, if you're one of those people who gets a little when you take tests, then inhale deeply and relax. Tests are important, and they're all over the place. If you took only two tests per week from first to twelfth grade, by the time you graduate, you would have taken nearly a thousand tests. Math tests, English tests, SATs. There are the tests that your teacher creates, and then there are the standardized tests created by people who you'll never meet. Some tests you can take more than once, while others, one-time deal. Even after you get out of school, there are still tests employment tests, college entrance exams, and driver's tests. The truth is, tests are important. They tell you and your teacher how well you've learned a particular subject or skill. And even though tests can be stressful, it's a good idea to keep them in perspective. Tests do not define who you are. They don't measure what a great and fun person you are, whether you're kind to animals or the life of the party. In other words, you are far more than just a grade on a test. Remember this guy, Albert Einstein, considered one of the greatest minds of all time, failed his college entrance exam. Doing poorly on a test will not mean the end of life as you know it, but doing well on exams does present you with more opportunities and choices. So the question is, how do you perform well on a test if you suffer from test anxiety? I mean, is it a matter of luck? I never take a test without my lucky pen. My lucky paperclip. My lucky underwear. Actually, no. People who experience test anxiety and who also perform consistently well on tests do so because they have learned strategies to help them deal with it. Anxiety is a form of fear, not the kind of fear that you'd feel if you were confronted by a hungry lion. But fear, nevertheless. Uh, when humans become frightened, certain things happen to us, both psychologically in our minds and physiologically in our bodies. Let me show you what I mean. This is Jim. Now, Jim is in what we call homeostasis, meaning that he is nice and calm. The chemicals in his body, those green and yellow dots, are balanced, and his heart is beating at a steady rate. Of course, Jim should be relaxed. You can't tell from this picture, but he's actually taking a nap right now. Take a look what happens to Jim when he's confronted with his algebra exam. Oh, he's no longer relaxed. In fact, he looks over at the algebra test and becomes more and more anxious. Chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol, those purple and red dots flood his system. And the more anxious Jim becomes, the more intense these physiological changes are. Y you can even say that right now, Jim is under attack. But these physiological changes aren't the only problem. Oh no, psychologically, couldn't be worse. 
Jim is indulging in what is known as negative self-talk. Let's listen. I can't do this. I stink. I'm gonna bomb. I'm just not good at math. Negative self-talk contains certain ideas or beliefs that we have about ourselves and predictions that we make about ourselves based upon those beliefs. Jim is telling himself that he's no good at math and therefore will fail the exam. Perhaps he has a history of struggling with math and his grade for the class depends upon his performance on this particular test. Maybe another person, say a parent, has an unrealistic expectation about Jim's performance. Perhaps some of Jim's friends tease him because he's not that great. Hey, Jim, you stink it, man. Whatever the reason is, Jim is basically talking himself into failing. This kind of negative self-talk is, is like a tape loop that plays over and over and over in his head. I'm just not good at math. I'm just not good at math. Jim needs to change the tape. Replace the negative message with something a little more positive, okay? A good way to change the negative message into a positive one is to simply pretend you're encouraging a friend. Like this. You're going to be fine. You studied, you got a good night's sleep, but I bombed the last test. I stink at math. So? Michael Jordan's had some bad games, but you wouldn't say he stinks at basketball. By changing negative self-talk into something a little more positive, you'll be taking an important step in helping to reduce your test anxiety. So how do you know if you have test anxiety? Well, it shows up in a lot of different ways. Sweating, headaches, stomach aches, queasiness, rapid heartbeat, tense muscles, or the inability to eat or sleep the day of, or even days before the tests, are all signs that you are anxious. When I get anxious during a test, I forget stuff. Even stuff that I studied. It just disappears out of my head. I can't concentrate. It's like my thoughts are all over the place. I get so frustrated and spend so much time trying to get organized that sometimes I don't even finish the test. I can spend days studying for a test. And when I actually get the thing in front of me, I go completely blank. It's as if I never studied at all. Sound familiar? Going blank, the inability to concentrate, only remembering parts of things, jumbled thoughts, not understanding what you're reading, not being able to finish, and yes, even crying are all consequences of test anxiety. You see, when you're taking a test, when you're suffering from anxiety, it's like running a marathon with a backpack full of bricks. It's nearly impossible. And finishing a race under those conditions would be such a monumental struggle that giving up might seem like your only option. But find a way to unload the burden of anxiety, and you'll be running like the wind. So far, we've been describing anxiety as a kind of hideous monster. What with the adrenaline and the cortisol surging through your body and the rapid heartbeat, tense muscles and nausea, I mean, what else could it be? But anxiety is a strange thing. A little bit of it could actually be useful and sometimes even fun. You know how you feel when you're about to ride a roller coaster? Nervous, scared, excited, all at the same time. And then, then there are those times when a touch of anxiety can actually improve your performance, whether that performance be athletic or intellectual. But you have to know yourself, and you gotta let your grades be your guide. If you're anxious during tests, but you still get great grades, then the anxiety for you may not be a bad thing. But if your test anxiety is causing you to do poorly and to fail, then it's a problem that needs to be addressed. The good news about test anxiety is that there are a lot of strategies that you can use to help you manage it. And the best thing about them is that nobody has to know you're doing a thing. I mean, it's not like you have to announce it to the class. Hi, everybody. I'm practicing strategies to help manage my test anxiety. Whoa. Some of these strategies are practiced at home, before the test. And during the test, it's all in your head. The biggest cause of test anxiety is lack of preparation. In other words, you didn't study enough, or you didn't study at all. So it stands to reason that if lack of preparation is one of the causes of test anxiety, then being prepared must be one of the strategies that you could use to prevent it. 
preparation for a test really begins the first day of class. First of all, you have to show up, and I just don't mean physically. Showing up means you come to class on time and ready to learn. Don't spend all your time in class just daydreaming. I would like to thank my director, my agent, and all of my wonderful, wonderful fans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Try to find out what type of exam you're preparing for. I mean, will it be an essay exam, multiple choice, true, false? And try to find exactly what material will be covered on the exam, like chapters, vocabulary, or questions. Because preparing for an essay exam is very different than preparing for a multiple choice test. Knowing the type of test in advance can really help you target in on what you need to know. If you know you're gonna be taking a standardized exam like the SAT, participate in a practice test session. By doing this, you can find out what your greatest strengths and weaknesses are, and then you can adjust your preparation accordingly. Okay, next. Do your homework. Make sure you've completed all your assignments, required readings, any other class projects. Then, practice, practice, practice. The most important thing you can do to reduce your test anxiety is to spend time going over what you learned in class. By doing this, you're gonna be taking in new information at a slow, steady rate, learning it as you go. Cramming! We all know what that is. You know, trying to learn weeks, even months worth of material the night before the test. Well, here's the thing about cramming. If you already suffer from test anxiety, cramming can actually make it worse. It's like a vicious cycle. You hate taking tests because you suffer from test anxiety. So you put off studying till the last minute, which leaves you no choice but to either not study at all or to cram, both of which increase your anxiety. And on top of all that, cramming just doesn't work. Have you ever wondered why you can remember events in your life or things that you learned one, five, even 10 years ago, but sometimes can't even remember what you did or learned yesterday? Well, the brain is an amazing thing but it does have its idiosyncrasies, uh, limitations. Basically, the brain has two memory systems. You got short-term and long-term. When you learn something new, it enters the brain through the short-term memory. Now, the short-term memory is kind of like a very busy hotel. Information of all kinds, from phone numbers to the causes and effects of the Civil War, is constantly checking in and checking out. Because, like a hotel, space in the short-term memory is limited, and so is the length of stay. The long-term memory operates differently. It's more like uh, an enormous mansion that's been around for years and years. In fact, the space in this palatial mansion is totally unlimited, and information and experiences can exist there for entire lifetimes. When you cram for exams, information is checked into the short-term memory. There's Mickey, thank you very much. Unfortunately, the information doesn't stay there very long. So by the time you need it, like when you're taking a test, it's already, here's your key back, I'm done, checked out. This is what contributes to that experience of um, uh, going blank, right? The trick is how to move information from here to here so that it's available when you need it. And the way you do that is by building a bridge from the hotel to the mansion. Let's call it rehearsal bridge, because in order to move things along its length at a nice steady pace, you've got to practice, practice, practice. And that's exactly what you're doing when you study. I mean, can you imagine not knowing the answer to this? Or this? That's because at the time you learned this stuff, you practiced or rehearsed it so much, and it was moved from short term to long term to short term to long term. I mean, it's almost impossible not to know the answer to those questions, right? When you cram for exams, information checks into the short-term memory, but instead of moving across rehearsal bridge to the long-term memory, it just checks right back out. Thanks, appreciate the stay. So in other words, where the short-term memory hotel is concerned, the lights are on, but nobody's home. By completing assignments when they're due and setting aside time each day to go over old material, practice new material, you're moving information from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. And this is where it needs to be for you to do consistently well on tests. Spending time each day and studying and practicing new information will go a long way in helping you to reduce your test anxiety.
Procrastination, five of the deadliest syllables known to student kind. It makes sticking to a study routine a real challenge. I mean, has this ever happened to you? You know you're having an important test. You've planned to study, and just as you're getting into it. Jim. Psst, Jim. Not you again. Go away, I have to study. Oh, come on, Jim. You can study later. I have a list here of 123,457 things you could be doing instead of studying. For instance, let's see, um, number 67,002, taking the dog for a walk? No? How about this? Number one, calling Jenny. Well, the dog does need to go for a walk and Jenny, I can study later. Learning how to manage your time and avoid procrastination will not only help you conquer your test anxiety, it will also make it possible for you to have more time for all the other things you want to do. A great way to prepare for tests and reduce anxiety is to stick to a study routine. Creating a study routine means making a realistic schedule that you know you can handle. Look, nobody's perfect, but sticking to your routine means learning how to say no when something or someone comes into conflict with it. But use your judgment. Sometimes real emergencies do happen. However, attending a track meet or going to a movie does not qualify as one. And here's a strategy that works for a lot of people. Create a buffer day. That means if your test is on Friday, pretend that it's Thursday and plan to be fully prepared on that day. So the day before the exam, you're gonna be looking like this and not like this. The segment you are about to see contains graphic footage of a high school student attempting to study. The makers of this program advise viewers not to try this at home. Parents and teachers may find some of these images disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This is Amanda. Amanda believes that she is studying, but the truth is she's daydreaming, procrastinating, listening to music, and talking on the phone. In fact, Amanda is doing everything but studying. And tomorrow morning, when she's confronted by her history test, she'll be totally unprepared and completely full of anxiety. Now, everybody studies a little bit differently and you have to find what works best for you. The goal is to get good grades. So you need to create a space that facilitates just that. Studying should take place in an environment where you feel mentally alert. Some people work best while sitting at a desk. Some people can listen to music when they're studying, but if you find yourself paying more attention to the music than you are to your studies, then you are not one of those people. Eliminate distractions. TV, radio, cell phone, instant messages, gone. Keep your notes and any other materials you need in order to study organized. Some people find studying in a group useful. Others do not. So you've created a study routine and prepared for the big English exam. These two things are going to help you manage your test anxiety. But there are also other things you can do to help calm the nerves. It's really important to get a good night's sleep every night, but especially the night before a test. It's a well-known fact that fatigue greatly impairs your memory and your ability to concentrate. When test day arrives, eat a healthy breakfast. Then there's the obvious stuff. Make sure that you bring everything you need for the test, your pencil, your pen, your calculator. Arrive at the testing site a little early. This is gonna give you a few moments to just sit down, relax, you could do a last minute review, and choose your seat wisely. If there are other students in the room who appear to be very anxious, they had a lot of caffeine, they didn't eat breakfast, they didn't get a good night's sleep. It is best to avoid these students. Anxiety is contagious, and you might catch it. So we've talked about what you can do weeks and days and even minutes before the test to help reduce your anxiety. But what can you do during the exam to keep that anxiety level in check? The first thing you want to do when you receive your test is to read the directions. It is a well-known fact that one of the reasons students bomb on tests is because they don't even read the directions carefully. 
Of course, if you already know what kind of test you're taking, or have taken practice tests, this step may not be necessary. You can get right to work. Know how long you have to take the test and budget your time accordingly. You want to make sure you have time to finish the entire test. Factor in time to quickly go over your work. If for any reason the instructions are unclear to you, ask your teacher or test proctor for clarification. Don't allow yourself to become distracted by the other students. Stay focused on the test, not what's going on in the room around you. If you come to a question you can't answer, skip it, if possible, and come back to it later. Focusing too much attention on something that you don't know can really increase your level of anxiety. Okay, now say everything is going along smoothly, and then suddenly, your old enemy, anxiety, arrives. Never fear! Visualization is here! Visualization is a technique that reduces anxiety by having a person create a mental image of something that is positive or relaxing. These types of mental images can actually slow your heart rate and regulate your breathing. To visualize, imagine yourself in a place that you find particularly common. So visualization can help reduce mental tension. But what about the physical component of test anxiety? The tense muscles, the rapid heartbeat, the shallow breathing. Remember, anxiety is a form of fear. And one of those things that people do when they're frightened is tense up to brace themselves against what they perceive as the threat. <sighs> Muscle relaxation techniques can help you deal with that. If a specific part of your body is tense, say your neck or shoulders, then you simply tell that part of your body to relax. Neck, relax. Relax, neck. Uh, no. Y you tell a part of your body to relax by simply focusing your attention on it and moving it all around. I don't know what she was doing. Some people use this technique to relax their entire body before they begin a test. They just start at their toes and work their way up. Breathing exercises are another excellent strategy for combating test anxiety. Try this. Breathe in through your nose for a count of five. And exhale through your mouth for a count of five. This type of rhythmic deep breathing oxygenates the blood and helps refocus your attention. About five breaths in and out should do the trick. Listen, anxiety is part of the human condition. Sometimes it keeps us from danger. Other times it can be fun. But often it really stops us from achieving our goals. The trick is understanding what causes test anxiety and then learning strategies that can help you manage it. Adequate preparation, a realistic study routine, and maintaining a positive attitude can reduce and relieve the burden of anxiety. So that the next time you take a test, it's going to be like a day at the beach. <laughs>